Welcome to Motive, Social Motivation for the Creative Class. My name is Tim Fulton, I'm your host. For this episode, Motive has gone mobile. Not just because we're here at the Midwest Photography Expo, but also because we've brought together three featured creatives who are all experts in mobile photography. Please check them out. I'm here with Adam Elkins, arguably the most popular Instagram user in the greater metropolitan area of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Adam, hi, thank you for joining us for this uh, mobile motive here at the Columbus Convention Center. Thanks uh, for having me. What's your username on Instagram? Big Man Japan. And you currently, as of maybe a week ago, I think you said, you are now at 36,000 uh, followers. Yes. How many people do you follow? Like 250 something. 236. Yeah. That was just, that was a quiz. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you talk about how, uh, sort of, how you came to use Instagram? Do you feel like you were one of the early adopters? I don't really feel like I was one of the early adopters. I just kind of stumbled upon it, thought it was something uh, really cool. I've always been into, like, Polaroids, so it was kind of like an easy way to uh, make like a digital Polaroid and like, oh, that looks cool, take a picture of it, you know, put a filter on it and... And I assume that you have some background in photography or that you did it before. No, not no, really. This not is really all. just simply developed from basically having a phone or a, a a camera phone on you constantly and so with the ability to do it and the ability to put it out there. Yeah, like like I said, I I was into taking Polaroids but I never really like dove, dove deep into photography before that. Can so. you talk about uh, sort of why you think you found so much success? I know that you were featured by Instagram uh, in their uh, blog. They did a profile of you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about why you think they were attracted to you and wanted to sort of put your story out there? I think it had to do with uh, like my interactions between other people and then also um, starting my own hashtags. Okay. Um, so there's like a lot, I mean, people can hashtag like sun or photo, right. but like coming up with something that is a little more specific uh -huh. to what you're taking a picture of. And some of your photos uh, have like a dozen hashtags on them, some of which are a reference to something you've done earlier, some of which are a reference to what other people have done, and some of them are just kind of ludicrous and, and funny, right? Right, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's just a way to have fun and like um, make people laugh, I guess. What was the, uh, the hashtag that you used that got the most, uh, that sort of got uh, Instagram paying attention? Um, it was portraits and puddles. Basically, I like to split the screen, you know, and then have them on the top, and then usually I would flip it. So it would just be them, like, standing above a puddle, and then their reflection would be on top. Uh, you actually met up with a group uh, of guys and girls in Chicago that had been doing the same, uh, is it Puddle Wars? Is that we right? Call it, we call it Puddle Warfare. Puddle Warfare. Yeah. Uh, and what is that? I mean, can you talk about what, because that's primarily, it's not, you're, sh you're not showing violent scenes in puddles. You're, <laughs> right. you're sort of uh, exchanging photos with this hashtag. Yeah, it's a, it was just a way for us to like expand and like get uh, innovative with it. Um, so like somebody would take a photo they thought was really cool and be like, you know, puddle warfare, and then they would tag their friends or like me, and then I would go out there and try and come up with something. And so that's their stake in the ground that they're, yeah, they're yeah. able, that's they're like, very cool. Yeah, this is what I got, what do you have? Um, so what do you, but now, not having a background in photography, you sell prints of these works. I do sometimes, yeah. I, I've had a few shows and um, actually Amy has, was like, that was my first uh, gallery. She had, Amy LeBrand had exposure and that got me exposure and, and through mobile photography. So it's fair to say that the mobile photography sort of has made you a photographer, sort of like that, just having that tool is what uh, m made you a photographer. Yeah, it kind of, uh, kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things and 
kind of, I guess it um, sort of, people sort of supported me and I got really good feedback and I was, I, I was really shocking at first, but it just kept happening and it just seemed to work. And I'm, okay, cool, I'll go with it. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Adam, thank you so much. Yeah, I really no appreciate problem. it. Yeah, thanks. I'm here with uh, Lindsay Arnett from the 614 Media Group, specifically from 614 Magazine. Lindsay's the director of operations there at the magazine, having been there uh, since the beginning for the last four and a half years. Lindsay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're here specifically today as we focus on uh, uh, mobile photography. You created the As Seen in Columbus hashtag uh, that 614 Magazine then sources for at least a page of its issue every month. Yes. Uh -huh. And so what what sort of was the inspiration for uh, creating that hashtag, pushing it out there, and what benefits has 614 seen from it? Sure. I mean, there's so much to see in Columbus, and we're not able to capture it all. So I decided to see what happens if we create a hashtag, if people would pick it up, and we'd get photos from all around the city at the same time. So it's been kind of awesome for events. You can see different angles from events. Um, you can see nooks and crannies of little places you never heard of in Columbus. So it's been a good way to capture exactly what's going on in the city right now. So we, what we do is we take them, we filter them, and we put them online, and we put them in a page in the magazine as well. So we just want to give Columbus a chance to see the city. And people have, uh, I imagine people end up doing it because they have an opportunity to have their photography featured in the magazine. Yeah, we dedicate at least a page to it. Um, on Instagram, we have about 60,000 photos right now. It's been going on for a little over a year. And I know that Adam, one of our other creatives today, uh, yeah. has certainly been featured a couple Several of times. Several times, yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Sometimes in the same issue. <laughs> Can you talk about, have you been able to sort of farm uh, specific types of content for As Seen in Columbus? Like, you're talking about the separate angles mm -hmm. from events, like 614 sponsored events showing like all the photos from Instagram from that night. How do you, how do you, I know that it's sort of the best of the best in the issue. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of organize it online for your website? We actually partner with a local company here called Venue Scene. Okay. Uh, they just changed their name to Scene, I believe. Okay. But um, so the, what we do is they actually capture all of the photos on Twitter and Instagram. And then we get an inbox and we can approve or deny. We only deny the ones that are maybe not in Columbus or inappropriate. Okay. Um, we don't get a lot of those, but we like to filter them a little bit, and then we, we put them up online from there. I'm going to start searching for inappropriate as the, <laughs> like, hashtag inappropriate, hashtag as seen in Columbus. They don't and exist. That out. Do you, what do you think is the next uh, uh, step for this? Do you see this expanding into possibly other emerging social media fields? Do you see you guys using it in different ways going forward? I would love to. I'd love to expand it any way that we can. Uh, it's great for our product, but that it doesn't stop there. It's great for the city as well. It gets people like um, you know some of the Instagrammers that you have on today recognized um, in a way that they can be featured in a publication they maybe not would have been before. Um, I would also like to, you know, maybe expand it and explore other cities as well. Not from a 614 perspective, but mm -hmm. it's been great for our publication, so I imagine it could be great for others as well. And I know you've seen, certainly seen some increase in web traffic. At least 40% a month over month. So, yeah, I mean, on a monthly publication, we kind of get some stale content a little bit towards the middle, the end of the month. So it's a nice refresher for the site. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. I'm here with Amy Librand, a uh, fine art photographer here in Columbus, Ohio. Amy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Can you talk? Uh, you uh, came here to Ohio State uh, by way of Detroit uh, and major, is that true? In a roundabout way. In a roundabout yes. way. You ended, you ended up <laughs> I, here. I ended up here. Fantastic. <laughs> and you uh, actually at Ohio State studied soil science and biology, is that uh, right? Chemistry. Chemistry yeah. and soil science. Yes. And now you are a fine art photographer. Yes. How did that happen? By accident. Um, I bought an iPhone and I got hooked. I, I downloaded, the first app I ever downloaded was a photo app, Hipstamatic. I'm sure it's probably the most popular photo app. Um, and I just got hooked. And now I have 60 photo apps on my phone. <laughs> and that's sort of what you do, is that, go around yeah. and 
Have you found uh, one thing that I don't think we've we talked a little bit with Adam about today? Um, do you uh, have any sort of monetization function that you're able to? Yes, um, actually, I, I show pretty. I exhibit regularly um, all throughout the, the United States and also internationally. Um, I sell prints through my website. I also have an Etsy site, um, and uh, and yeah, I sell everything from frame prints to not framed prints. And are you still shooting exclusively just with uh, a, an iPhone? Yeah, I've experimented with um, film, and which is a total hassle. And um, I have a DSLR that never gets used. It's just the instant gratification of the mobile, uh, the mobile device, and being able to always be available to do something creative. And a lot of what you've uh, done and what you're going to be presenting on here later uh, is the. Uh, what you've used for editing, Correct. like the, the mobile editing. Correct. And are you still primarily just editing like on your iPad or on your iPhone? Just on my phone, yeah. That's pretty much it. What <laughs> are uh, what are some of your favorite, like not actual social media editing mm -hmm. apps, well, what, are, what other apps do you use for editing? Um, well, there are a million different kinds of apps. Um, my favorite uh, basic editing tool is called Snapseed. Um, you can do everything from uh, changing contrast and saturation, and I'll show a little bit about that, to um, adding filters, cropping, straightening a photo. Um, and then there are several filter apps where they just apply uh, light leaks or blanket filter, grunge, grungy type things. Um, and then what I'm really known for are um, superimposing images and taking multiple photographs and combining them into one photograph. And I'll show a little bit about that as well. In addition to sort of combining those images, do you tend to, uh, like when you're preparing for a show, are you sticking with certain subject matter or is it literally, I'm going to go out and take photos today and what I see is what I'm going to then use as content? Actually, most of my work is pretty conceptual. Um, I do a lot of stuff in my own home. Okay. Um, I shoot, uh, I use myself as a model just out of convenience. Um, and then I, uh, you'll see my legs in a lot of photos. That seems to be an ongoing theme, or my feet or my legs walking through an image um, or floating through an image. Uh, so a lot of my work is surreal and conceptual and kind of tells a story. It's not, I don't take, lands, I'm not a landscape photographer or, or anything, or street photographer. It's, it's much more conceptual. Fantastic. Well, thank you. I'm going to, we're going to get to the presentation and, uh, but thank you awesome. so much for coming out. Thank you.